you may not know this, but normally when I do a DIY project, I always think I can complete it quickly and easily, and then it always ends up being significantly more complicated, and I do end up scrambling within an inch of my life to turn it into a video because it does take about three times longer than expected. But not this week. This week, we are doing simple, easy thrift flips. These are all super simple upgrades you could do to something from a thrift store, something you already own, anything that just needs a little new life brought into it, you know? All right, with that, it's time to meet the contestants. First up, this hat, which features a ribbon that is actually just a raw fraying strip of fabric. This plain t-shirt, which has been sitting in my closet for over a year at this point, waiting for a cute graphic DIY. These jeans, which are almost entirely perfect, but are just slightly oversized. This insanely gorgeous shirt. Can you believe I thrifted this? I'm literally obsessed with it. The only thing about it that isn't an absolute sleigh is the bottom. So we're gonna make some changes there. And finally, this lamp, who is not in the best shape, but has a base with great potential. All right, let's get started. Okay, so our first thrift flip for the day is this hat. Um, this is so simple that I was like, is it even worth including? But sometimes things are so simple that you don't even think of them. So we're gonna do it. This originally came with this green ribbon that went through these grommets right here. And I mean, it's not even ribbon, it's just like a raw strip of fabric. So I'm gonna replace it with an actual ribbon. That's it, that's the whole thrift flip. It's that easy, baby. Also, if anyone has any ideas of what I should do with this, let me know. Okay, so like I said, this is literally so simple. I'm just taking some white ribbon I already had, threading it partially through the hat, just like how the green fabric was, just generally estimating how long I want it to be, and then cutting it. Then, just to keep the ends from fraying, I slightly melted them each with the lighter. Honestly, I don't really know why this works, and try it at your own discretion. Caution advised, but for like silky satiny ribbon, it has never steered me wrong. Then you just loop it through the hat and voila. It's literally that easy, but I feel like it's so much more versatile and wearable this way. Okay, next up we have this plain t-shirt. This shirt was just calling to me to do some sort of tiny cute embroidery right here. And this muted green feels very earthy, so a mushroom. Perfect way to go. First, I sketched my idea, and I was very inspired by this Tombolo shirt. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but uh, I wanted sort of a funky blended multicolored look. That said though, if you're just starting, I feel confident you can do this, but if you don't feel confident, just one color or even just the line art would also be super cute. Literally, make it as simple as you want, it will still be cute. Then I just pinned some stabilizing backing to the shirt where I planned to embroider. If you have a more stable fabric like denim or canvas, you don't really need to do this, but because this shirt is stretchy, I thought it would help a little bit. And my last step before the actual embroidery is just sketching on my designs in white pencil, just to give myself a very general idea of what I'm doing. Finally. I got to work on embroidering. First, I picked out all my colors, and then I just started with my outline and did the stem and the little spots. Then for the actual specific color sections, I just kind of made them up as I went and did what I thought would look decent. You can definitely plan it out more if you want, but you don't have to. All right, next, these jeans. These are honestly pretty perfect. I mean, I've been wearing them without needing to alter anything, but I just feel like the tapered mom jean shape needs a little visible ankle. And on me, these are not showing any ankle. So we're just gonna crop them. This one is also extremely simple. I just tried them on, figured I wanted them cropped pretty much just above the existing hem, took them off and cut each hem off with fabric scissors. I like the distressed look, so I'm not gonna like actually sew a hem or anything. I just like pulled at them a little to get the loose threads out and make the cut look a little more natural and intentional, very minimal distressing. I would actually prefer them a little more distressed on the bottom, but I know that will happen naturally with wash and wear. So for now, this is literally it. Okay, for our next flip, we needed to go to the craft store for some materials, so I got the thread I needed and then got very distracted. Should I make something with these beads? Should we have a channel-wide tie-dye party? Should I buy this wooden castle and paint it and fill it with little furniture like a little dollhouse? I actually have the urge to do that literally every time I'm here. That sounds so fun to me, so please tell me if you would watch me make a little castle as a video. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm not joking. Okay. Then, of course, I had to stop at the Target next door and call them out for copying my patchwork dress design. Just kidding, that was a joke. But if you do want to know how to make a very similar dress to this, watch my video. Anyway, then I contemplated some other cute items and whether I could make my own versions of them. If you want to see me try to make a quilt bag or a two-piece set like this, let me know. All right, finally, we are onto this utterly fabulous shirt and I decided I just wanted this to be cropped and then sort of cinched in at the waist and have a little poofy ruffle on the bottom edge. So here's how you do that. First step, turn it inside out and pin the bottom folded up so it's however cropped you want it. I pinned this while wearing it at first and then took it off to pin all the way around. Also, if your shirt is really long, you might need to cut off some of the excess fabric, but this one is short enough that the extra part won't be showing, so we're just leaving it. Step two, take some elastic and cut a length of it to fit around your waist, snugly, but not stressed too tight, just whatever your waist measurement is, that's how much you need. Okay, step three is a little tricky. We're just going to pin the elastic on the inside of the shirt all the way around. Obviously, the shirt is much wider than the elastic, that's why we're adding it, so we have to evenly distribute it around the shirt. I'm sure there are a lot of ways to do this. I don't know that this is technically the best way, the most correct way, but this way works and makes sense to me. So what I do is, first, just pin the end of the elastic on one end of the shirt, then fold the piece of elastic in half, and then pin wherever that halfway point is on the elastic to the other end of the shirt, aka halfway around the shirt's whole circumference. Then I'll pin the other end of the elastic near the first end, all the way around the shirt, completing the circle. Now it's just a matter of figuring out the halfway point on the elastic between two points that are already pinned, and pinning that spot to the halfway point of the shirt between those two spots on the shirt that are already pinned. I hope that makes sense. Then I just keep doing that till it's secured all the way around the shirt. Finally, step four, you just have to sew the elastic on, which is also hemming the shirt in the same stitch. And for this, I just did a straight stitch all the way around, and this is the important part, made sure to stretch the elastic so it laid flat against the fabric as I sewed it. This way, the elastic bunches the fabric together at the waist, but is still able to stretch to get on and off. At the end, it should look something like this. Okay, we finished the shirt. I'm so sweaty right now. It's like 90 degrees today, so that's that. <laughs> I was gonna say sorry, and then I was like, I don't need to apologize for being sweaty. You can't smell me. Anyway, our next uh, project is this lamp, which the shade is gone, as you can see. I cut it off yesterday because I thought it was ugly. And now we're gonna clean this. I don't know how well you can see, but it's very dirty. And then we're gonna try to reconfigure a new shade. I don't really know how that's gonna work, but stay tuned to find out. <laughs> okay, so firstly, we're just cleaning off this base, which sorely needed it, but it was mostly just dust. So it actually was quite easy to do. Also, shout out to my friend Molly, who I was thrifting with when I found this. She suggested thrift flipping it. Amazing idea. Everyone say thank you, Molly, in the comments because this lamp got such a good flip. So now we have to try to construct a shade. Oh, wow, those birds are really loud. Can you hear them? Hello? The tricky part of this is that this little plastic frame does not hold this in place unless it's pinched together like this. So right now I'm pressing these together, but if I let go, it falls. So we have to make something that can pinch the sides together, which I didn't realize before I cut the old one off. So I ended up deciding the best, easiest course of action would just be to make a new little sleeve shade thing to go around the top of the lamp. Same setup as how it already was before, but just with a cuter fabric. So excuse this footage for being a little horror movie-esque, <laughs> but my next step was just to look through my thrifted scrap fabric boxes and figure out which fabric would look the best. We had this sheer bright pink one, we had this thicker, more muted pink velvety one, we had this lavender. A few different options I thought were cute. Also, by the way, obviously I realized this lamp is not structured how most lamps are structured, so this isn't the most generalizable DIY, but I would say if you wanna do something like this for a lamp you have, maybe try like making a fabric sleeve to just go around a shade you already have. 
All right, now it's time to make the little sleeve thing. First, we just had to measure the top part of this lamp. If you're doing this with a shade, just measure the height and circumference of your lampshade. In my case, this portion of the lamp is six inches tall and about 26 inches around. All right, next, we had to cut out our fabric. So I marked seven by 27 inches, which gives half an inch of seam allowance on all sides, and then cut it out. Our next step is just to hem the top and bottom edges. So I pinned both edges folded over half an inch, held it up to my lamp to double check that it would be the right size, and then just sewed each edge down with a straight stitch. Finally, we just had to sew the sleeve closed, so I just pinned the shade around the lamp inside out to make sure it would fit right, although I will say it was really hard to get the fabric perfectly taut, so honestly, just using your measurements might be better because I think this ended up being a little looser than it should have been. Then I just sewed a straight stitch down the edge, right sides together, and it was ready to put on the lamp. Okay, everyone, are we ready for the final reveals? Here they are. First, our hat. Not a very shocking transformation here, but it does look so much nicer. It's giving huge Studio Ghibli vibes, and I'm so excited to wear this this summer for like a picnic or perhaps a frolic on a grassy hill. This next one I think is tied with the lamp for my favorite. It's our little mushroom tea. This did end up with some puckering, but I think it's still so adorable. I truly had completely forgotten I even had this shirt in my DIY pile, and now I'm so excited to add it to my regular t-shirt rotation. Next, these jeans, which honestly probably look almost exactly the same to you, but I like them so much better this way. They just feel more proportionate, and I know I'll feel so much more comfortable and confident in them. Next up, this ruffle shirt, which was already so good, but now, even better. I am especially excited about this one because before I would have only worn it tucked in, but now it stands alone so much better. I think it'll look so cute layered over stuff, and I'm just really excited to style this. Finally, my other favorite, this lamp. When I got this, I had no idea what the transformation would be, so I'm just so excited with how cute it turned out, especially for how simple it was. Plus, my sister suggested styling it with something inside, like books or something, which I thought was so brilliant. So I tried it with some books, then I tried it with this little flower vase. I think both are so cute, and I just feel like there's so many options for styling this piece. All right, y'all, please tell me in the comments which contestant you think should win, which one had the best transformation. I think if you enjoyed this video, you'll really enjoy my last thrift flip video, so you can watch it right there if you want to. Oh, and I heard if you like, comment, and subscribe, you will suddenly gain whatever DIY craft skill you do not yet have but have been wishing to cultivate. You will wake up and be a master at that skill. That's just what I heard. I can't guarantee. Okay, thanks so much for watching, and um, if you made it all the way to the end, first of all, love you bestie. And secondly, put the mushroom emoji in your comment so I know that you're my favorite and my BFF. Also, thank you to everyone who actually did this in the last video. I literally like thought no one would do it, and a lot of you did. Y'all are the freaking best. Anyway, um, okay, thanks. Bye!